Hello, I'm Mary Susie from Bead Me a Story, and today I want to show you how to make a bangle bracelet using square wire jump rings and 12 millimeter EPDM rubber O rings. So the 12 millimeter size uh, you can find on beadmeastory.com, and this size is fairly comparable to a 16 gauge 5 16 jump ring. So if you're looking to do a pattern that you need a very similar size, uh, this, this is the 12 millimeter and it's comparable to that. These jump rings are square wire. You can see they have a hard edge to them. They're not rounded. And these are 18 gauge 3 16 jump rings. So the first thing I want to do to start this project is I'm going to close two of these jump rings. Okay and I'm going to uh, bring in the tools that I need, the super fancy tools. I've got a little piece of leather here, and I've got my, uh, my pliers. I'm using a flat nose plier from Zuron. If you're a beginner, I highly recommend using Zuron tools. They're not very expensive, and they are very slip resistant, so that's really gonna help with uh, when you're starting out and I've got a pair of bent nose pliers. But you could also, in your non-dominant hand, you could use another pair of flat nose pliers if you prefer. So let's get started. I've gone ahead and I've closed these and I've opened all the rest of my jump rings. So uh, for a six to six and a half inch wrist, I used a count of uh, 52 jump rings and 26 rubber o-rings and what I'm going to do is this fancy tool this little piece of leather this is this is probably like one millimeter leather I'm going to use it as a needle so I am going to put my rubber o-ring onto here and these two that I closed pre-closed okay I'm going to slide onto there. You see I have both sides of the leather passing through there, so it's like a needle. And I'm just going to pull these over this rubber o-ring, okay? So they should be sitting right in the middle. Sometimes they do slip off if they do. Go back to the beginning, put your o-ring on your needle, and start again. So now I'm going to pick up one of the jump rings. Okay, I like to look at a jump ring like it's a clock. 12 o'clock is the opening. I grab it around three o'clock. And when I go to close it, we'll grab it at around nine o'clock to close. Okay, I'm gonna pass it through one side of this rubber O-ring. Okay. And then I'm going to pass it through the other side of the rubber O-ring. Just like that. And then I'm gonna come in, like I said, Grab it around nine o'clock and close. When I'm closing jump rings, I'm pushing in. So see how this overlaps where they would meet ever so slightly. So I'm, I'm pushing with my right, pulling with my left as a left, as a right-handed person, excuse me. And then I'm, I'm pushing in at the same time I'm doing that. You never wanna open your jump rings like this or push in like this. But what you do wanna do is as you're gliding them back and forth, you can also be pushing in at the same time so that this overlaps. Okay, and then when I bring it back, it should meet up almost exactly. Now, I will tell you that the square wire jump rings are an exercise in tedium. Um, they do not match up or look like they match up quite as well as the round rubber O-rings, or excuse me, the round jump rings. So, um, you know, just be patient with yourself and be as anal or crazy about this as you want to be. Um, but that's pretty good. So I'm going to bring in another one. Okay, so I'm going to pass this through the same rubber o-ring just like I did the one before it and this one's a little bit harder to do just because it's a little bit tighter in there okay I'm gonna pull it 
pull it around so that I can grab it at the three o'clock on my right and at the nine o'clock on my left. You might have to kind of push this other ring back so that you've got easier access to close this. And again, closing by overlapping and pulling it back. Okay. And there we go. So now I have one set of jump rings, an O-ring, and one set of jump rings. So now I'm gonna get my leather out again. I'm gonna use it as a, as a needle. And I'm going to pass it through this pair that I just put on. Pull another ring through. Now I like to, if possible, when I'm using rubber O-rings, um, there is a directionality to this in a way that you want this laying. So you can see that when I pull it through, I'm gonna wanna fold it this way. So I'm gonna try and get my little leather pieces so that when I pull it through, that this rubber O-ring is laying kind of in the direction that I want it to lay, okay? You see that takes a little bit of force to pull that through, but once it starts moving, um, you wanna be careful because you can easily uh, go too far and pull it all the way out, and then you gotta start from scratch again, so just be careful of that. And you see I have the, I have the O-ring midway through so that I can fold it in half once again and pass my first jump ring through that rubber O-ring. And I'm gonna close, it's not quite perfect. Like I said, you can make yourself crazy with these square ones because they, uh, you know, you can always see the crack if they're not met up just exactly right. And then you see I've got my second jump ring, just like before. I'm gonna pass through this rubber O-ring. Okay. And push this one back. Grab this at nine o'clock. And close the second jump ring. Okay. Now in this particular bracelet, actually, these closures are going to get covered up, but remember that since we're using square wire, you can get a real sharp edge here. So you want this uh, closed as cleanly as you possibly can. You don't want to have a little edge sitting out there that can uh, potentially nick your rubber O-ring and uh, cause that O-ring to break. Okay, get my little piece of leather again. Besides leather, you can use wax cotton. Um, you could use a fuzzy pipe cleaner. Um, the whole goal with this is to have some kind of needle that's not uh, sharp and will tear your rubber O-ring. But other than that, uh, feel free to be creative and use whatever you have handy. Okay, so once again, let's make sure that when I'm pulling this, See how the O-ring is perpendicular to the jump ring, so that when I pull it through, I'll be able to fold it in half, and it's kind of sitting in the right direction. If you don't get them in the right direction, it is fixable, but it's a little bit more of a pain, um, so it's better if you just get it facing in this correct direction in the first place, okay? So we got that one in, and I'll slide a new jump ring through. And so you get the gist of this. We're just uh, adding two jump rings, pulling a new rubber O-ring through, adding two jump rings, pulling another O-ring through. And here's my second one. I kind of got to work in, work a little bit harder at that one. Okay, push this jump ring back. And close the jump ring. Okay, I'm going to take a little pause. I'm going to move forward with the work. And uh, I want you to go and finish up the length. You can pause this video if you need to. And then when we come back, we'll, I'll show you how to finish this. 
Okay, so you can see that we've reached the full length of where we want to get to, and this is uh, almost complete. And then I also want to point out here that these jump rings on the ends are facing the same direction. So you want to make sure this is the case because the next jump ring is going to be facing uh, on the sides and it'll be facing this direction. So that's why it's important that these two meet. And I'm going to take two more rubber O-rings. I'm going to apply it, apply them to the ends through these and then we'll use one more set of jump rings to complete this. So let me go ahead and use my fancy little leather needle again. Okay, got that side done. Give that a little tug. This one's facing a little off, so I'll turn it. Okay, and I've got both ends ready to go, ready for this last jump ring. So I'm going to pick up my jump ring at 3 o'clock, just like I have been doing. I'm going to pass it through the end here and fold the other one in half on the other side too and pass it through there. Okay. So there's not a whole lot of room left for me, so I'm really grabbing this more like at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock, but that's totally okay. That's what happens. Uh, rings get filled up, and you have to adjust your position while still trying to make sure that you can bend the uh, jump rings. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with the second one. Okay, now with this one, it's going to be really hard to get a pair of pliers in with my left hand over on this side. So uh, to remedy that situation, I will turn it around, feed this in a little bit more. Okay, turn this around and I grabbed it this way. So this way my dominant hand has grabbed onto it first and then this part's sticking out. So it'll be easy to come in with my non-dominant hand and get that closed. Okay. I'm not loving the closure on that final one. Do it just a little bit better. that on the inside okay and now we have a complete bracelet so just to show you this is going to stretch to go over your hand you can roll it onto your hand see how it just rolls okay and I want to show you something else about this one too so this is continuous you can do a whole bunch of things this is you can see that it's stiff so um, applications for earrings and um, anything where you need uh, need a little bit of structure to the piece. But I also want to show you this next to a Byzantine bracelet. Okay, so I know it's not exactly alike, but you can see we still get that little bit of effect of the, um, the folded back rings. So this does look a little bit similar to uh, Byzantine weave. It, these would be great worn together. Um, and this is kind of a simplified version because of course the rubber O-rings have a uh, slightly different quality to them. You can fold them in half and get this kind of fold back effect too. So I hope you've enjoyed this project and I'll see you next time. Okay, so now we've completed a bracelet. 
and um, I used a, a fun and easy size to work with with that. And I showed you that this is stiff. Okay, see how I'm holding it up and it's not draping? So that stiffness uh, lends itself really well when we want to start working with um, uh, more sculptural items and things like that. So I just want to show you a little project that I worked on. So this is that same size. And you can see here I did only about 10 rows. So this would make a cute little uh, pair of earrings or something like that. But I want to dip down into a smaller size now. So I'm going to, just like I started the bracelet, I've already got two rings closed. And I'm gonna slide them onto here. I got a slightly smaller piece of leather. So I'll slide that on and I'm going to start making this in, these are 10.1 millimeter rubber O-rings and these are 20 gauge 532nd jump rings. I wanted you to be able to see that this works with round jump rings as well as the square wire. It's easy to get locked into something and not be experimental but um, this is quick and easy stuff to do it's very forgiving and as long as you're using the right sizes together um, then you can do a bunch of neat things with it so you can see i'm just doing this the exact same way as we did before i've got the first pair that i closed i pulled the rubber ring through and then i folded it in half and added two jump rings to that. And I'm gonna pull this through. Oops, try turning it sideways so it goes in in the right direction. Okay, so I'm gonna continue on with this and then I'll show you what I made with this. And I think you'll find it to be a really fun uh, pro and experimental project. So I've continued on with my chain, and you can see that little piece here. And um, I'm going to end up doing this with 10 O-rings. Again, these are 10.1 millimeter O-rings, which is basically the exact same size as a 16 gauge and a quarter inch jump rings. It matches exactly. Um, and I, I'm gonna end up using about 20 of the jump rings. And then you'll see I'll need uh, just one extra pair of the pink jump rings um, for the top. And I will show you what we're gonna make here. This is really fun. And I made this really super cute pair of earrings using uh, Julie Haymaker's shrink plastic molds. Um, this is one of her bales. And then this is uses her ruffle um, mold. Basically, once you heat up your uh, shrink plastic and you put it in the mold, it creates these little ruffles. And the bale maker, um, that pattern is available for just a dollar on Julie's website, so well worthwhile. And uh, the molds are a little bit more, but once you have them, you can use them continuously. So um, I'm just going to briefly show you this section of how I how I did this. So you can see I made my bale. There's a little hole down here that you probably can't see in the video, but there is one. And I just want to show you how I'm going to use this chain with it. I'm going to go ahead and take this little portion of chain and I'm going to slide it through here. Um, I used a chopstick uh, when I made the bale, so that was about the right size for doing this. And you can see I have this through here. I'll push this over. I want you to be able see it on the side see see the fun stuff once it's completed okay and then i'm going to just as before i put this on the leather and i'm basically just finishing up a circle so let me pull this one through this side and pull it through here so you can see once you Finally tug it through a lot of times it pulls a little bit too far that's okay and I'll get my one for the opposite end 
Again, we're doing um, an even number of rows so that this little uh, chain is going to end up with all the jump rings facing in the correct directions. So an even number will work, an odd number will mean it's twisted slightly, and we don't want that. We want it to go in a straight line. Okay, so you can see I didn't pull that in straight on. It's a little bit harder to do. This is a, a smaller size than what we were working with originally. So, you know, I want you to be able to see the difference. Um, some people really like big chunky jewelry, but not everyone does. And, um, you know, I wanna make sure that you realize that uh, with a little bit of practice, you can very easily move down to a smaller size. So, see my jump ring here. So just like when we finish the bracelet, I'm gonna pass through this ending row and I'm gonna bring this ending row up. Okay, so that's one. And then we need one more. there okay and if you remember what I said I said turn it around so that you can grab onto this side that's harder to grab onto so that when you bring in your left hand tool it's very easy to go ahead and close it okay so that's it so something I want to point out to you is um, that with this earring I want you to make sure that your jump rings that sit on the top are facing this direction. You can see that I'm going to add two more jump rings to the top and then a black jump ring will get connected to the ear wire and we want to make sure that, that those jump rings are facing in the right direction. So I'll just go ahead and pop those in. If it's if that's not the one that's on the top, it's okay. Um, you, this is just a circle so you can just pull it around until the right one is at the top. Not a big deal at all. Okay. So there's one. And two. And then, just for fun, I happen to have the ear wire sitting here so I'm gonna go ahead and add the top it's not gonna hurt anything that we're gonna be doing so you see I just put that jump ring through slide the ear wire on making sure the ear wire is gonna be facing in the right direction that I want the front to be I probably should have taken a look at this bit now I think I like that as the front so that that works out fine um, and a whole lot of the bail is gonna be covered up so let me just show you um, some of the pieces and where to get them. So in the center, I made my little ruffle piece of shrink plastic for myself, made that last night. Um, I am using one of these little sequins. Now, if you don't have these, these are available from uh, juliehaymacher.com and you can get a whole bag of them like this, a little variety pack, so that you can add it into things. Um, you're gonna need a little eye pin to hold that. And I just wanna point out that in Julie's um, bail video, where she makes this little bail that goes around here, she also shows you how to manage this eye pin and how to affix this on here. So that's all out there if you spend the dollar to get her uh, her bail then it's on there and it, it may even have been a free video so uh, that's there and then a little stripey bead and just uh, so you know we do carry stripe beads at beadmeastory.com and I would get them while the getting's good because I have heard that our US distributors aren't going to carry them anymore I'm not sure if they're still being made in the Czech Republic so we have plenty, they should last a while, but 
Um, if you want stripy beads, we do carry them. It'd be me a story. Okay, so this is the whole part that's going to go on to this front section here that's remaining. And that that's it. And then you get a cute pair of earrings. So you can see this part's going to remain stiff. Okay, and it's going to be all one piece. This also could have been a pendant just as easily. I might have wanted to put, if it was a pendant, maybe some bigger rings uh, through here, something a little bit more chunky. And then like I showed you, that was also possible in this larger size. So this was the size we were working with on the bracelet. And then th this is the 10.1 millimeter O-ring that I used here. So I hope everybody enjoyed this project and uh, go home and get creative. Thank you.